Hey, this is Wileen Benson and you are in the right place if you're looking for a healthy way to deal with anger. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Do you have anger issues? <laughs> well, I'm gonna tell you, whenever I feel anger, anytime I feel any of those emotions, I get excited. So how would you like to be able to get excited every time you feel angry? Well, this is how I do it. Whenever I feel an emotion that is um, on that lower vibration scale that um, some people consider negative, I see it as this is pointing the way to a limiting belief. This is something that I need to look at. It's something that I need to change in my life. And so I'm like, yes, thank you for pointing the way to this. I'm gonna just tackle this and then I won't have to deal with it anymore. And so I'm gonna encourage you to do that and I'm gonna take you step by step how to do it. So first thing, when you, if you are feeling angry, there's usually three different reasons why anger starts. First of all, it may be something um, that I'm believing about myself. You know, maybe I'm angry at myself because I made a mistake, or maybe I'm angry at myself because I lashed out at someone or whatever, you know, reacted to something. So some sort of limiting belief about myself. Um, the second reason why some people feel angry is a pattern. Maybe there's um, something that happens, like there's a step-by-step -step thing, and then as soon as this one thing happens, it just triggers the anger. So if this is something consistent that happens on a regular basis, maybe, um, maybe it's something at work. You know, every time this particular outcome happens, it just takes you straight to anger. So if it's a pattern, if it's something that happens on a regular basis, then we're gonna take a look at that as well. Um, the third reason why some people go to anger is because of another person. Maybe somebody's showing up in a certain way and they just trigger you. You know, they just trigger you into anger. Either it's the same person or multiple different people, but they show up in, the same, in a similar way. Then another person could be taking you to that anger. And we'll talk about that one as well. All right, so we're gonna look at these one by one. And the first one is if there's a limiting belief that I have about myself. So whatever it is that I'm angry at myself for, I'm gonna take a second and I'm gonna ask, what is this, what is the limiting belief that is causing me to feel angry at myself? So maybe I am angry at myself because I can't balance my checkbook. Like every time I do it, I'm always off and my spouse gets upset at me because I can't do it right or whatever. So maybe the limiting belief is I just can't do it right and I get angry at myself. So that limiting belief, I can't do it right, is gonna to continue to bring me opportunities to not be able to do it right, because I have to be right. A belief for me is like a truth, and so it has to be right, it has to be true, and so I'm, conscious, I'm constantly gonna be bringing things to myself to um, create that opportunity to not be able to do it right. So if I wanna change that, I'm gonna do something that I call lightning belief breakthrough. So if I don't like the results that I'm getting from my limiting beliefs, I can't do it right, then I'm gonna change that to something that will bring me what I want, what I do want. And maybe I can't believe 100% I can do it right, I do it right, maybe I can't believe that 100%, but what I could believe is I know how to get answers. I know how to ask questions. I ask the best questions. I seek information until I get the answers. I continually try until I get it right. So I'm gonna be creating new beliefs that will suggest that I do do it right, and then all of a sudden I'm gonna start bringing evidence to myself that I do it right. So that's how you take care of being angry at yourself for something. Finding that limiting belief, breaking through it with lightning belief breakthrough, and begin finding evidence that it's true. So the second way that we might be bringing anger to ourselves is pattern. Um, sometimes we're constantly finding ourselves in situations that bring us to anger. And um, so it's good to just list all of those steps. It's kind of like step outside of your body and look at yourself as a lab coat doctor and you're with your clipboard and you're saying, huh, this happens and then this happens and this happens and then she goes to anger. And so just list everything that happens so that you've got like three or four steps before the anger happens and then you can go back and look at, all right, when did I step out of power? So for example, 
my, um, my child has a messy bedroom. And every time I go look in the bedroom, it is messy. And I talk to the child and I say, will you please clean your bedroom? And I'm saying it really nicely and they still don't clean the bedroom. And then the next time I go and this, it's still not clean and I threaten. And then the threat doesn't work and then I, it's, and then I just go completely, I fly off the hang handle and I'm completely angry. And then finally the child does, cleans the room because I'm so angry. So that might be a pattern that continually happens and maybe it's not just cleaning bedrooms. Maybe this pattern actually shows up at work or it shows up with your spouse or it shows up in other areas where you, you try to get it done nicely, doesn't get done, try, and then you threaten and then it doesn't get done and so then you get angry and then it finally gets done. So you've got this evidence that says if I get angry then the job will get done. So you're gonna continue to go to anger until you find a, a, a different way for that to happen. So what I suggest you do is write down those steps. I ask nicely, doesn't get done. I threaten, doesn't get done. I get angry, gets done. All right, so where do I step out of power? I'm actually in power all the way until I get angry. Once I get angry, because I'm even in power while I'm threatening, um, if I threaten, but I'm giving some of my power away at that point because I have to, the only way I'm gonna be happy is if the other person responds in a way that I want. So asking nicely, I'm still in power. Threatening, I'm putting a little bit of my power into the other person's court because the only way that I'm gonna be happy is if they, um, I'm gonna get back to nice, is if they clean their room. So that's the point where we're stepping out of power. So what I'm encouraging you to do is to identify that moment when we step out of power and then go back one step. Okay, so asking nicely. That was the last step. The person didn't do it. So rather than stepping out of power, giving some of my power away to that person by threatening, I'm going to remain in my power. Person doesn't do it. I'm going to remain at peace. Wow, that's interesting that you wouldn't clean when I asked nicely. Can you, um, is there some reason why you're not cleaning your room? So you're remaining in power, you're remaining um, calm, and maybe finding out a little bit more information, and possibly creating a belief at that point that says, I love to have a clean house. The part of the home that is my space is clean. I would love to have my my child's room be clean, but that's his space, that's her space, and I'm gonna allow her to choose how she shows up. I ask nicely and encourage, if they choose not to, it's their space, and I remain at peace. So finding the pattern, identifying where you step out of power, going back one step, and remaining at peace, at that, at that space. And it'll be amazing to you. You might think, well, yeah, but they're never gonna clean their room. The fact is that if I remain at peace and I allow them to choose, more than likely, everything is gonna go my way. So I encourage you to try that. So the third way is if someone shows up and just their very being is causing you to be angry. Like something that they do, just something about their demeanor just sets you off and you become angry. You don't even know why. That is an opportunity for um, us to look at that person as your greatest teacher. Um, we're all mirrors for each other. If I'm looking at someone and they're making me angry about something, then that gives me an opportunity to look within myself and say, wow, there must be something within them that is really bothering me. And if I can see it in them, it means it exists in me in some way, shape, or form. And so it's an opportunity for feedback for myself. I don't have to change that person. All I have to do is look within myself and see what, what am I not changing? What am I so angry about that I'm not changing about myself? I can see it in them, but I can't see it in myself. So take a minute and look within yourself and find what it is that you're so angry about within yourself make that change and I promise you when that person comes next time, it, they're not gonna make you angry because you've already fixed it within yourself. You don't see it in yourself anymore, so you won't see it in them. 
So those three ways are um, possibly ways that or possibly reasons why you're feeling angry and um, different tools and techniques that you can use to, to diffuse that anger before it ever happens and to remain in power and remain calm. All right, so there you have it. And I'm gonna just say the healthiest way to deal with anger is to find gratitude for it and learn from it. So post your comments below and thanks for watching.